You returned the way you came, strolling down the pearlized path until it turned into a dirt road again, until you were no longer amongst the shining white structures of Orphahin, until you were walking in the tall grass and speckled black trees, now knowing the name of the species, Pagoin, you searched for the familiar figure of a man named Taggle. The meadows were as soft and tranquil as you left them. It was quiet, however. No breeze fluttered over the grass or caused the pagoyan trees to creak in any direction. Still walking towards the crossroads where you bid Taggle goodbye, you could see he was not standing there anymore. A drop in your stomach forced you to acknowledge that feeling of abandonment. Where had Taggle gone? Why wasn't he there? Perhaps something terrible had happened, or he was in danger and had to run away and hide. Oh God, where should you go from there? You could turn back to Orphahin to seek help from Piplopil. But what could Piplopil do? Lure him out of his hiding place with confectionery? No, no. Just stay calm. It was okay. You could go back to the Kylone River and retrace your steps. So you went straight ahead, back the way you both came, hoping to see Taggle again. You focused on everything around you, every tree, every blade of grass and every rise of a grassy mound, letting it all sink in. The simplicities of this sweet little world swamped you in its ever-increasing vastness. Where had you gone? A planet? of similar size as Earth, or one of terrifying greatness enough to emasculate the sun. You somehow glided between its atmosphere and its crust, holding an artifact of petrifying importance. The pendant you possessed caused little girls to willingly sacrifice themselves, and from it tore a void into a hidden pocket of the world. Maybe, just maybe, you should guard this silver button with every fibre of your being. As the wind picked up, coming in the direction of the river, there was something else emerging not too far to the left of you, a form of some kind. The closer you came to it, the more one part of its form became familiar, a ruby starred wide-brimmed hat. On top of a mossy rock sat the missing wizard. Your missing wizard. Taggle, Taggle, you cried, sprinting through the tall grass towards him. His hat rotated and those green eyes found yours. Thank the triptych, there you are. Taggle sighed in relief. You watched him shimmy down the rock and hurry towards you. He called out your name in warm surprise. I trust everything went all right? You remarked that it did, mostly, but you were worried when you couldn't find him on your return. My apologies. The roads were a little too open for my liking. Ah, oh, that's why he wandered off. Taggle was hiding from something. That didn't make sense. What was he hiding from, and why was Taggle willing to befriend and trust you? Did he not see you as a threat? Probably not, considering you knew next to nothing about where you were. Anyway, you had things to deliver. You returned the brooch, much to Taggle's confusion. You beamed with a smile, unveiling the two maps from your pockets. One for you, and one for me. With the map, you playfully tapped Taggle's head over his elaborate hat, before dropping it into his hands. Thank you so much. Taggle cried. He tapped your head back with an expression of curiosity, 
wondering if he had done this strange ritual right. I am indebted to you, as always. He said your name again. He scanned through the map studying the newly approved map, and remarked on its changes. Look at this. Fratelt is now Golderer. Fratelt has been reduced to just a county. And Adarine is still Adarine. You wondered if Adarine had a special significance the way he spoke about it. And then the conversation soon turned to the unsold brooch. I can't help but worry. How did you pay for two maps without trading this brooch for them? Yes, the lizard man. You replayed the interaction at the map store with the trading of the circle of your skin for two maps from this lizard man. Describing the whole experience as best you could, Taggle's expression contorted. A lizard man, you said? One with scales and horns protruding from his temples? I think I know the race you are referring to. If he was one of Gave Life, he probably wanted your skin to sell and add to a magical concoction of some kind. Adding pieces of yourself or other creatures to your potions can create interesting and unusual effects. Someone of Gave Life? What did that mean? You told Taggle Gave Life was a phrase you've never heard before. Well, there are three different lives which inhabit Epiapia. All are umbrella terms for the three categories of the many species here. The classification of these three lives was established in the age before this one. He paused, his hands tangled in the mass of his necklaces. The sigils along the hem of his robe scattered and broke apart in a frenzied fashion, turbulent symbols caught inside the waves of fabric. You swallowed. Had his dark circles always been there? Had the creases below his eyes been so pronounced? Taggle. Taggle didn't look well. He sighed, his words wavering. I'm sorry. We shouldn't talk about such miserable things out in the open. When we are in private, I promise we will discuss it. And that was that. You would have to wait for your answers again. You both started to walk back the way you came, heading toward Orifahin again, but now down the path, running along it. The soil was damp and spongy underfoot. The atmosphere was cool, but not cold or unforgiving. A small smile curled around the corners of your lips as you admired the beautiful scenery with wonder. Flowers bloomed all around you in shades of red, blue, yellow and purple, their scent wafting over to your nose with the wind as if they were calling out for it. A gentle comfort, which had been absent from your chest moments before. Tall, beautiful flowers of so many different colors. That was when you recalled the appearance of everyone else in the town, how Amazonian every person was. Tackle was the shortest person you'd met, besides clear eyes. Not that it mattered, nevertheless it was a thought that stepped into your mind. During your examination of Taggle's stature, Taggle had studied you in the same respect. His mouth fell open, his tongue dithered for words, calculating how best to approach you with such a question. If I may try not to offend, I do have to ask, what are you exactly? You are not grey like me, nor are you of the chromatic kind, 
Yet, you have skin the color of the ground, sand and soil. What? Your skin? What did he mean he'd never seen someone of your color before? This was peculiar. Your memory returned to your time at the cottage where Yukumi resided. She had similar colorings to you. Well, at least in terms of human skin tones. Even clear eyes did. What did this mean then? If clear eyes was a spirit, did that mean Yukumi was too? What did that make you? And why did Tagor not recognize you to be part of this world? Maybe spirits don't show themselves too often. You were alien to him. You had to commend him. He was calm, extremely calm, for his first time meeting an alien. You replied that you were just born this way, which was true, the complete truth. Tagle didn't seem satisfied with that answer, though. You hesitantly elaborated a little more, that it was no secret to him that you were not from here. You weren't even sure how you got here. When the stars aligned and you fell into this unusual world, it was tentative for assumptions to be made about the destination. Why had you awoken by the river? How had it been timed so perfectly for you to navigate the boat to the exact spot at the exact time for you to break Taggle's fall? Strange forces pulled and pushed you into motion. Maybe it was those same fates that made Taggle not want to speak of such things out in the open. You tried to put a positive spin on things, speaking of how lucky you were to bump into Taggle, and how grateful you were for all of his help so far. Taggle glanced at you, softly, almost gently as if he would disappear if he blinked. His words floated away from him as he lost his grip on a sentence. You met me at a very strange time in my life, which is a shame. Suddenly tears slipped from his eyes. Tears were an understatement. Liquid seeped from his eyes, salt water crashing down on his gold pendants and seeping through his purple gown. Tear after tear slipped out. It was like his head was a bowl of water and it was all pouring out of him. A moan of pain escaped him, his fists digging into his eye sockets like a child desperate for sleep. What's the matter? you shrieked. Could you do something to stop it? To which Taggle gently shook his head no. With eyes that now shone like spheres of jade, he whimpered. These eyes... They're so heavy... in my head. You pleaded. If there was anything you could do to help, through exasperated gasps, Taggle wiped his eyes in dismay. I, I need to visit her again. My medicine. Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Just a small chapter for this stage 5.2 my gosh I need to figure out how many videos I've done so far <laughs> but yeah I do like this chapter but I don't know if it's the stress of work or other things on my mind but I haven't fallen out of love with it I'm just in a little limbo when it comes to my creative process. 
hopefully the next stage will be a bit more exciting. But anyway, I hope you're all doing well. Take care. Bye bye.